I think mainly like the coolest part about repetition is that uh, there's like it does like a little uh, trick on your eyes. So it kind of your eyes always gravitate towards like you know like symmetrical things and like things that have like kind of repetition quality. So that's why I was attracted towards the stairs like immediately because of you know the way that it's structured, the way that it lines up, and then it turns into like a game. Like everything in my life is a game pretty much. So. I was trying to play the game of like, what can I line up really cool with like, you know, the stairs or like, and having like really cool lines of repetition. And that goes into like the whole kind of intentional framing, the concept of um, basically uh, finding things that are already framed and for you that's really well. Um, and then you do have to do less work and you're just trying to find a really dope moment about it. So hopefully I find somebody who looks really cool and I, I try to find myself like a, I try to find like a proper position for myself. Uh, to li like line up with like the way that these stairs are kind of like slanted actually look really tight this tree like this doesn't like we don't really get stuff like this in New York so I kind of gravitate towards that kind of aspect also like hopefully this lady doesn't fall down <laughs> while, she, while she's going across the street looks dangerous all right so right now I'm shooting at uh like an f2 400 and the tree gives it a little bit of kind of extra funk. Yeah, I like to like kind of like give and take like with situations like this, uh, especially when I like I start first shooting for the day. I like to call it. I mean, I think everybody feels like they have to warm up a little bit. So when I find like a spot that's like immediately gravitating like towards me, like I try to like warm up at this spot a little bit and try out a couple of different angles, and then um, it gives me a little bit more confidence for myself to go out and then start trying different things and. Uh, you know, just experimenting more with the environment and stuff. So, like having a location like this, like right away, is like it's, just, it's worth checking out for a bit to see if um, we can get something cool to happen or somebody to stroll by or, or all that other good stuff. So, like this staircase is crazy. If somebody comes down this one or somebody walks up, like in front of it, like that's an easy banger, easy banger. Oh, this lady looks like she's on a mission. Let's see. So I'm still going with F2. Oh. All right, that was it. Um, the really cool part about like one of the tips I was trying to talk about like intentional framing is uh, uh, finding situations where like you don't have to really do that much and it's already really gratifying with you know, location, uh, the thing that I mentioned before with repetition, um, like the overall vibe. Um, and what was so perfect about that shot is that uh, at the same time someone just literally came right down the stairs right down the middle. It wasn't probably like, you know, the guy was really cool, so he didn't have anything that really stood out or a lot for him to wear, but um, it was still exactly what I was looking for, um, which was really cool to have somebody walk right down the stairs. So uh, the next question that I would like go for post, like post production is like, am I gonna go black and white with that because of his outfit? Or am, am, am I gonna try to edit it in color to like see if I can, you know, find anything that was kind of satisfying. But even, you know, talking out loud, I'm thinking about a black and white photo already because of his outfit wasn't just that, it was kind of bland and it matched the environment a lot. But regardless, that's exactly what I wanted. So in photography, you kind of have to like be happy with what you get sometimes and like <laughs> not spit in the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's so funny. I kind of want to just see if I could get one more person though. Like I'm kind of a... Oh, look at that. <laughs> that was tight. That was it. Um, it was a little bit more it because I had a better uh, kind of uh, positioning. So when, especially when it comes to uh, shooting like some kind of locations where, you know, I guess like gratifying kind of like line setups and repetitions is making sure that you have enough like points of texture. So the stairs have, you know, a really dope kind of uh, zigzag theme going already. And I was composing it in a weird way so I wasn't getting enough uh, of clarity with my photo, but having that building behind it adds another level of texture to the uh, the shot. So I have like two really uh, cool lines of repetition going on with the building in back of it. Oh, look at this dude! This guy's even cooler, and he's eating some chips. Oh, that's even that was, that was actually even better. But then like the same kind of you know thing where you're just basically waiting for moments where you have really cool dynamic people going into like dynamic dynamic situations. 
what I really mean by like getting, being yourself influenced by the situation is that uh, I feel like in with street photography, when it comes to documenting, you don't want it to you don't want to change uh, the variables too much, and le I'm letting them know that the variables know that you're there, meaning that like. If the, subject, if, the, if the subject that you're shooting is really aware that you're there in some situations, sometimes it could take away from the photo. Um, so when it comes to situations like this, to be across the street and like kind of like scout something out and like you know frame something intentionally and like, and kind of have things walk into your frame rather than forcing them into your frame, um, you could get more of like a genuine reaction and. and it could be way more of a like documenting life rather than like you know than you're influencing it so much. Um, I'd rather be like the fly on the wall situation where you know this is a definite example of something like that. So yeah, that's why like situations like this makes it a lot easier, way more dynamic to do something like that. So. Oh. <laughs> you think that's so funny? That's cool. At least I got something. At least I got something. So like when I was looking for a shot like this, like basically uh, what I ended up doing, maybe I should do it a lot for you a little bit. With this kind of framing, exactly, I like to have some kind of balance. Um, and then I'm looking for somebody to either walk into the first box or the second uh, box. So that being like the one to the right or the one to the left. So the shot that I got before, uh, we got homegirl, she got into the second box. It would be cool to get somebody into the first one, but I'm, I'm not stressing it, honestly. It's not a big deal. I just like, sometimes it's not always about like how crazy the photo is, it's just like, I just wanna get like, uh, like what the stickers was like going on at the time, so. I think a lot of the times with, um, when I go out to shoot, like sometimes you feel pressure so much to like try to, you know, I mean, try to get like the most epic shots all the time and then like, you know, try to get all these crazy, like, you know, never before seen moments, but like, you know, it really just comes down to like, you know, just taking a stroll in the day and like kind of seeing how, where it flows. Um, so like, you know, there is some situations where you get antsy, but um, no, I just really like to keep it really chill and I don't want to like force myself to like, you know, shoot something that I don't actually think I like just because like you're shooting it because you think everybody else would like it. Yeah, so I'm just trying to like feel like, you know, see where the wind takes me and like, you know, figure out where the next good photo is for myself, so. Oh. It never, it's never as sharp as you want it to be. Right now I'm just trying to find a place where like some, uh, like pretty much like a good vibe of, uh, a place with like a where it has a somewhat of like some good really good texture and like a, a place where maybe it's like a little bit of a angle where i can have some kind of a you know a dynamic kind of moment where i can have somebody walking into the frame I'll like i'll like see something like this like people under the walkway that like, always looks really tight like i like taking pictures of uh like uh all the construction sites because uh it's probably not gonna look the same in another like six months. So I like to kind of have a photo like, yeah, look, this is kind of what it looked like then. So like, like that's like, goes like, it's not the craziest shot, but it's like more or less like a personal kind of diary for myself. Like, I love like, like infrastructures and like, you know, highways and all that kind of stuff. Like this place is really tight to have, uh, like the expressway kind of like just go straight out into the city right to the water. That was cool to have somebody walking up the stairs with the flowers. Right now I'm trying to get my framing right a little bit. Um, at first, I, like, I just love, like, uh, like I said, like the intentional framing aspect of it, like there's something that's already kind of already structured for you. So when I get to situations like this, I'm, at first it becomes a game of trying to figure out what's the right, you know, kind of uh, comp composition. When I was framing before, like a couple of my shots, I felt like I was shooting a little bit a little bit too down, focusing too many on too much on the white cars below me, when I should probably be framing a little bit more up and cut those cars out so I could give myself a cleaner shot and having somebody walking right through the frame. So they, you have like an easier message to kind of interpret, you know? So, and then I, I shoot in portrait mode a lot, especially with the 85, uh, because since it's such a tight lens, I feel like I get more real estate when I shoot like this way. So, um, The 
get one more. There we go. All right. Oh, you know, I want to try something actually. So, but in order to do a motion blur, you drop your shutter speed pretty slow. Um, so right now, it's uh, my my shutter speed is way too high, and then. Sometimes it helps to uh, bump up your f-stop as well too, especially when it's days like this, it's really bright outside. So you can bump your f-stop up and then bump your ISO down and try to you know, compensate with something like that. So right now I dropped my ISO to about 100. My f-stop is on f9. I, need, I still need to go slower though. My shutter speed is at like 20 and 30 now. Drop my ISO a little bit more. It looks sick with the bus coming. Oh yeah, that's money. So I love these situations where like these noir style shots um, where someone is kind of silhouetted where you have like a solid uh, palette behind them and then it's like something neutral in the front. It's like definitely this situation right here. So any way you shape it, it looks like a movie. Oh, look at the exchange. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, Polly. Hey, Polly. We want to make a seal, Polly. Hey, Polly. You playing games? You playing games? I'm out of here. Scram. Um, so everybody, this is Miriam. Um, we're gonna be bothering Miriam today. Um, we're gonna do like a little shot where we're gonna set up a, a, a dynamic kind of shot where she's gonna be walking under uh, the trestles. Um, a little jaywalking for this purpose. Um, but it's gonna look really cool to have it symmetrical and lined up but under the, uh, the viaduct. So thank you for, you know, coming out and, yeah. and helping out. Yeah. Uh, one more time. That was nice and smooth. You're professional. Um, thank you, by the way, for risking your life for me. Uh, no, is it, when you uh, out shooting with friends, make a, makes it a lot easier, uh, especially with situations when you're trying to want to try out something that's a little bit different, um, and then you're trying to like you know equate all the variables of like you know different people in the street and walking around, um, having somebody like Miriam or like a friend close by, uh, it just makes the situations a lot easier. That's no, sweet. A lot of, my, like I said, a lot of my photography is gut feeling stuff, so a lot of it is not like, I, I am thinking, but I'm just more or less just going with my intuition a lot of the time. So like, I'm still, even like, even like as this is going by, like I'm still like just watching like a bunch of people just still like going back and forth across that crosswalk because it just feels like that's like one of the most like the busy, busiest locations. So like, that's why it's really cool to have Miriam, uh, you know, reenact some of like, some of the hustle and bustle because like you know it's just a constant pace over here so it feels like it doesn't feel that much different from what it would be happening on a day-to-day -day basis like she did, did it again like you know <laughs> so we went to first avenue and then uh, we stumbled upon like one of the coolest pair of stairs i've ever seen in my life um and then that was a, a really good place to start off with um especially when it comes to uh, intentional framing especially for me um warming up as a photographer sometimes uh you know, it, it takes it a different amount of time for everybody to warm up. So going into a situation where you can have a really cool set of stairs so we can, you know, work on, a, on an intentional framing and work on shots with like really cool styles of repetition and, and having your subjects walk into the frame and not making it so much more difficult for myself. Um, it was a really, really good situation to walk into um, and try out, a lot, uh, try out a, a couple of different shots. So um, from that location, we kind of, you know, started to wander down a little bit and we stumbled upon a other couple of really cool spots. Um, some situations to having more people walk into the frame and also walking by the viaduct and you know trying a couple of different th uh, different things out over there as well too. So um, a lot of the situations today was uh, you know it was really cool to uh, kind of observe Seattle on the level of being a fly on the wall rather than you know try to force everything every time. So uh, it was really cool to have like our first day to shoot out with something like this. 
the pictures that I think that are going to turn out um, as some of my favorites is definitely the, the ones from the stairs a little bit earlier where um, I feel like there was um, one of the earlier shots was a woman walking down right in the middle of the stairs. I mean, a couple of the shots by the viaduct, um, having the you know, situations, having people like either like riding their bikes across or trying a couple of different the, the slow shutter shots. I think um, some of those might have turned out halfway decent, <laughs> well, hopefully. Um, mainly because like, you know, you, I like the location a lot and I like the vibe and the energy that it's giving off. So um, it, it gets uh, easier to set up situations like that where it feels like you're gravitated towards them. And, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, it's a tough game of photography because you like, there's expectations that you don't, you know, that you don't reach all the time. Um, but then something can happen and somebody could walk into your frame and then, or, you know, the situation arises where you feel like this is the dynamic moment that you're looking for. So, um, so you could quickly resolve um, all of that, you know, all those feelings immediately. So, no, I definitely, definitely say, you know, not being familiar with the area is like an easy answer, but at the same time, like more or less, it's just, you know, feeling out like what you're looking for out, looking for throughout the day is um, always kind of like a troubleshooting situation, you know, like there's like a lot of like, you know, little dilemmas that pop up, but, um, you know, we definitely march through and we get through them and, you know, we're still out doing something that we love to do, taking photos.